Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Good morning, and praise the Lord. Today is Wednesday, August 14th, 2024. Today we celebrate the prophet Micah. This is actually special for me because my son's middle name is Micah. This prophet Micah, whose name means who is like God, was a Moorishite from the land of Judah. He prophesied more than 50 years in the days of Joatham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. These kings reigned in the 8th century before Christ. From this, it is clear that this Micah is not the one who was the son of Lembla, who censured Ahab and was murdered by Ahab's son Joram. For this Joram reigned the 9th century before Christ. Yet Micah was still prophesying, as mentioned above, in the days of Hezekiah, who was a contemporary of Hosea and Isaiah, and of Hosea, Hosea, the last king of the ten tribes of Israel, when that kingdom was destroyed by Salmanazar, king of the Assyrians. This Micah is sixth in rank among the minor prophets. His book of prophecy is divided into seven chapters. He prophesied that the Christ would be born in Bethlehem, in Micah chapter 5, verse 2, in the reign of St. Theodosius the Great, the holy relics of the prophets Micah and Abacham were found through a divine revelation to Zebenus, bishop of Eleutheropolis. All Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, forgive us our sins. Master, pardon our transgressions. Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for your name's sake. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Our epistle reading this morning comes from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 10, verses 12 through 22. Brethren, let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your strength, but with the temptation will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. Therefore, my beloved, shun the worship of idols. I speak as to sensible men. Judge for yourselves what I say. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a communion in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a communion in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Consider Israel according to the flesh. Are not those who eat the sacrifices partners in the altar? What do I imply then? That food offered to idols is anything, or that an idol is anything? No, I imply that what pagans sacrifice they offer to demons and not to God. I do not want you to be partners with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. Shall we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? Our Gospel reading is from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 16, verses 20 through 24. At that time, Jesus strictly charged the disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him and began to rebuke him saying, God forbid, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me, for you are not on the side of God, but of men. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any man would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Heavenly King, Comforter, Spirit of Truth, 
present everywhere and filling all things, treasury of blessings and giver of life, come and abide in us and cleanse our souls, gracious Lord. We will continue with our reading through the book of the Wisdom of Solomon that we find in the Orthodox Study Bible. We are in chapter 3 today, so let's begin. The Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3. The souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torture will ever touch them. In the eyes of the undiscerning, they seem to have died, and their departure was considered to be misfortune, and their passage from us to be their destruction. But they are at peace, for though in man's view they were punished, their hope is full of immortality. Though chastened in a few things, great kindness will be shown them, for God tested them and founded them worthy of himself. He tested them like gold in a furnace and accepted them as a whole burnt offering. In the time of their visitation, they will shine forth. And they will run about like sparks through straw. They will judge nations and rule over peoples. And the Lord shall reign over them unto the ages. Those who trust in him will understand truth. And the faithful shall continue with him in love because grace and mercy are upon his elect. But the ungodly shall experience the punishment they themselves plotted, they who rejected the righteous man and rebelled against the Lord. For whoever despises wisdom and instruction is miserable, and their hope is vain, their labors are useless, and their works are worthless. Their wives are foolish, and their children are evil, their existence accursed. Blessed is the undefiled barren woman who has not known sexual promiscuity. She will have fruit in the visitation of souls. <clears throat> Blessed also is the eunuch who has done no lawless deed, nor thought evil things against the Lord. For a chosen grace of faith will be given to him, and a delightful portion in the temple of the Lord. For the fruit of good labors is of good report and the root of discernment is infallible. But the children of adulterers shall not reach maturity, and the seed of a lawless bed shall perish. For even if they live a long time, they shall be considered as nothing, and in the end their old age will be accounted dishonor. But if they should die young, they would have no hope, nor consolation in the day of decision. For the end of an unrighteous generation is grievous. That is the wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3. And we'll continue with chapter 4 and chapter 5. I will be traveling the next few days. It's possible that I will miss a day or two in the next uh, four days. I'm traveling to the east coast of the United States, but we'll get back on track as soon as I get back. Thanks for listening. I'm glad you're here. I hope these are a blessing for you. My name is James Newcomb. And it's, this is part of my own spiritual discipline. So I do these whether one people, one person listens or 30,000 people listen. I still do it because our Lord listens and the angels above listen. And they rejoice with us as we read the scriptures. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. We will close our time together with the Lord's Prayer. Thank you for listening. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.